We are live as live can be. Episode 151 of the TFW podcast. That's freaking wrestling. We are a little taping after AEW, but we didn't watch all of AEW. And I know we typically start with WWE. You guys know who we are. We three the hard way. Matt, Ishan, Rhodesia. Love y'all. Holla at us, et cetera, et cetera. I got to personally just start with MJF and Will Ospreay. Free the hard way. Thank you, Mr. Knight. Holy hell. I know, E, you don't talk about match of the years. I know you don't get into that whole thing. But oh, shit. right now it's top five easily. Easily top five. It could be top three for me. Um, I, I was super impressed with them. Thought the match was tremendous. Thought they told an incredible story. And I love the ending. You go 59 minutes and 58 seconds. And then MJF being the cheater, the bastard that he is, cheats to win. Thought it was magnificent. I never even, I didn't even think about what the ending was going to be for that match. I didn't think about Osprey is going to lose, you know, twice in whatever it's been, 30 days, 45 days or so. Um, when they announced that match, I was just in the entire mindset of why the hell are they doing this match before all in? Why is this not at all in? Who knows what the fallout is going to be, but man, they killed it for them to get an entire hour and do that. Bravo. Bravo. Now I don't know. We, I've seen everything up to the Mariah May promo. So I didn't get the chance to see Swerve and Okada yet. I'm going to stay off the internet till I watch it. So, but I know they ain't touching that match. So hopefully maybe something great <laughs> happened at the end of that match too, to set up blood and guts for next week. But what'd you guys think of uh, MJF and Osprey? So you calling it top five so far, huh? I, I can respect that. I can respect that probably sure. in my top yeah. five too. Um, in my mind, what I think about is how long a match is. So for instance, we talk about 55, 59 minutes and 58 seconds. So I call that an Iron Man match. I'll just call it Iron Man match for purposes of what I'm about to say. To get an Iron Man match unexpectedly, knowing this episode 250, so we know that it should be a, a, a great show is kind of like impressive. And then what was even more impressive in that match to me was that it was entertaining from beginning to end. Like in a lot of the Iron Man matches, like there's times where you're building to a pinfall, how many um, pinfalls you can get into the end of the hour, like those kind of things. It wasn't even like that. And of course, I didn't look up until about the 40 minute mark. Like I'm, I'm like, wait, they're still wrestling. They're still going. And you called out about how long they've been wrestling for. And so for me to be able to get like an, an Iron Man match that was entertaining from when they first officially locked up, when he finally got back in the ring, all the way to that last count of him knocking him out with the blow. That was just so incredible to me. The energy that it took for all the kip ups later on in the um, match, the, the kicking out of pinfalls, like just all of that in an hour match, I don't think people realize like how special that is and how important that is to get that in wrestling and to get it with two people. And I've been very critical on MJF about the last two, three years, as far as his wrestling ability. And he has proven me wrong time and time again. I don't know if I still really care for him so much, but overall, as far as um, a character, as far as going in the ring against somebody like Osprey, to me, I was like, yo, what the hell? I did not expect to get this beautiful blessing of a wrestling match. Hey, top five so far, 2024 um, tonight. And we did get that in those two. Great job. You know, um, Will Ospreay, man, like he is such a perfect fit for that company in the spot that he's in, man. Like he is such a likable baby face he's like a really good baby face better than i thought when he got there like he seems very genuine um earnest he can go in the ring like he's like perfect for them um i don't know what he's he's being paid but i think he's worth every penny man like and then you think of mjf like right he, he can go in the ring uh, i've always respected his bitch ring work actually and i, I like you know, he he says a lot of things in character, but I like his mind for the business, um, especially mm -hmm. at a very young age, man. He, he's phenomenal. I think you got to say that those two guys are their version of, like, Brock and Austin. Like, right? They're their version of Cody and Roman. Like, they're, like, the top guys. One, one on the heel side, one on the baby face side. It can probably, you no know, change either way. At some point, they need them to in a couple of years. I just I was like, wow, we're getting, like like, their top guys 
I guess not randomly, like, right? I, I don't know. I can't really put my finger on when they actually announced the match, but I was like, damn, we getting these guys, like, they're top guys in the match for a championship, like, super early, like, right? Like, you would think that they would kind of wait off on a match like that. But digressing in my mind, like, I always try to just enjoy what I'm watching and not book the shows because that ain't my job. I'm, I'm, just, I'm a fan. I'm just going to watch it for what it is. It's a really good match. Um, I'm not, I, it's, that's not a five star for me. You know, y'all know I'm an old man yelling in the cloud. Like, uh, I, I hate those strike back and no sell spots, like super kick, no sell, bounce off the rope. Like, that, those, those things just take me out. I don't like them. I know they happen in WWE, um, mm-hmm. in certain matches, but wherever it went, wherever it happens, whenever it happens, it can happen in the backyard. I can see the kids doing it and it, it'll, it'll piss me off. I, it's, I just don't like that kind of stuff. Uh, when it was rolling around, that was the, so like certain spots weren't for me, so I'm not gonna rate it that high. Overall, it was a great match. It was really long. It didn't seem very long, um, but really, really good match. Um, aside from some of the spots that just aren't for an old man that yells in the cloud. Um, but I mean, these are the corn stars of that company, man. Like, and they're young too, man. I think Will was like maybe 30 or something like that. You know, uh, MJF is in his late 20s, and these guys are in the prime of their career. They look good, man. Like. I mean, real talk, like the companies, like, you know, once they keep can continue to get their creative footing together, like they got some great cornerstones and some great chips that kind of they can build off for the future. It's almost like kind of like the the Boston Celtics of, of of wrestling. Like they got some young pieces that's really, really good. It's going to be really good for years to come as long as they keep putting them in the right position. So kudos to them. I um The only thing about the match I didn't like was them – fighting in the crowd for like two minutes. I'm a stickler <laughs> for you got to have rules, right? I'm good with the, the moves you're talking about E because we do get that in every promotion does it. So whatever, I'm good on that. But like being outside for like two minutes, uh, we got to find a better way to be able to make that happen without just blatantly not giving a damn about the count out and then having the announcers have to cover and saying, hey, Bryce is just, we want a winner. So I'd do the same if I was Bryce. No, it should be a count out. <laughs> it should be. So, you, so, be so your issue is for match, match was 45 him. minutes before it did. Hey, it's funny <laughs> so with, what? like, what you like and don't like. Go ahead, Rodgers. You cutting in and out. Go ahead, Rodgers. Yeah. You know what I'm I, no, I was just saying that, uh, Matt, your issue with the going in a crowd isn't because them taking up time to get to the hour mark. It's just more of, hey, the match is supposed to be with the rules. And after 10 seconds, you're supposed to be counted out and the match should be over. Is that what we're getting at? It's a title match, right? Yeah, it's a title match, man. Like more more than just a regular match. You got to stick by the rules because if we're allowing you guys to wrestle outside the ring for a minute and a half, we no point in MJF hiding that he hit him with the ring. You might as well just, that's blatant too. Yeah, man, that's just one of the things to where like I, I totally get what you're saying. I'm on the same page with you, but it's it's almost kind of like you know when you're in a relationship with somebody, like they got like these little things that you just don't like, but you kind of mm-hmm. when it happened, you kind of raise your eyebrow and you keep it moving, right? But it is that one thing is what you get upset about that you wouldn't think you would be upset about. Like for me, it's the strikes, right? For you, it's that because like that happens. Uh, well, I don't want to know. I don't know if that happens as much as WWE. I kind of I kind of don't think. Like, well, cause like, you know, AW, they always find themselves outside the ring longer than they should. Right. And then the referee goes out there trying to get them back in the ring. It kind of makes sense from a TV perspective. Like, right, man, mm-hmm. look, we got TV. Like y'all can't be, y'all got to get y'all. I know the counts like, uh, count to 10. I could count y'all out like two minutes ago into the match. Y'all got to get back in here, man. Y'all got to finish this up in the ring. We got TV. So I guess in, in some way in my mind, I kind of make that work for, for him, but I, I'm with you though. Uh, I wish that certain spots, then those are some of the spots that when I say like, you know, a five-star match, like you can't have that kind of stuff to me. Like, right. Like it's just not, but you can have like a thousand people in the, in the Avengers, uh, you know, unite in, in a match and I'll call it a five-star match at WrestleMania. So I guess it's all what you like. <laughs> That's all it is. That's all this whole and thing just, is. It's just what we one like. One thing, my final thing that on that match that I'm going to say about MJF. And again, I don't want to toot his horn. Um, but this was, I think was his third match in the last six months. And again, I know we talked about going out in the crowd for two to five minutes, but the put on an hour match 
is pretty damn incredible. So I got to give him props for that. Osprey, he said, I think that um, he was like, Osprey's had 30 matches in the last six months where MJF only had three. But point is, he's been conditioning Callus for it. To be able to go an hour and you haven't been in a ring and having that many matches, that's pretty damn impressive to me. And what it no, takes. high level. What? It, it, there we go. High there we go. level yep. is what that mm-hmm. is. So to East yep. point, like talent's never been AEW's issue, and hopefully it never will be their issue. So mm-hmm. we know what it is. What else from uh I mean that was all I wanted to talk about. Like I said, typically we start with WWE, but it, seeing we just saw that match, I had to get that out there because that was, of course, the best match we're gonna see this week and probably for does anything top that match on SummerSlam? Ooh. Well, I would probably say it can. We have there. They haven't announced anything yet official with Drew, ha, have they? After no, because he wouldn't apologize. Him, yeah, because he didn't apologize. All he had to do was apologize, so, Drew. Yeah, all he had to do was apologize all he to had the refs. To do was apologize. But let's that. assume, let's assume that it's going to be some kind of either singles match or triple way as between Drew and Punk and Seth. Yo, you figure <laughs> out every week. I was going to let that go, man. I was going to let that go, man. I was going to let it have it. I was going to laugh and let it keep it. Matt, will, Matt will just, he, he going to come oh, at you all the time. Everything. I was going to let you go. <laughs> Triple but way, but, and she says so thing, fluently when I make too. Up, like that's, yes. like it's really yeah, a turn, like, right? That's just what it is. <laughs> <laughs> like you no, don't know no, what it's really no. called. <laughs> real talk, like a real talk. If you are talking to somebody, and that's how language is established. If you are saying something and they understand what you're saying, that is language, and that is a word to me. Now, when I say no, that's a real word. That I mean, I really looked it up on the dictionary, in the Merriam-Webster dictionary, to make sure it was a word. But a triple way, you, everybody know what a triple way. <laughs> is come on everybody so yeah it's not what it's called it's called a triple threat match but triple way actually is more common sense like that actually is a better way of explaining the match is a triple way versus a triple threat what that means so there's three threats so then that means it really should be a four way because if you t- talk about there's three threats then you the I one mean, everybody, everybody can figure out what you're talking about so, yeah I agree. right <laughs> exactly but that's what i'm saying but a triple way makes more sense you're, point you're is for, to, to get to, you are to, sitting get to here your for question. over a minute Listen, wait, let me this ain't the type question. of content people are <laughs> calling in and checking in for but, us with, but like, maybe though because right if in their mind if they feel that way too because if we're getting down to exactly getting technical triple th- like triple threat uh-huh. i mean i have three threats that mean i'm the fourth person I'm a, but back I'm, to I'm your question sh- back, to your back to your question back to your question we live remember on Martin national tv right, right? so listen uh back to your original question if we could get ideally punk and drew in a singles match i think that could be better than what we saw today between osprey oh, wow. and mjf yeah. Okay. If if we can get the the, Parker Drew is the not violence that we need, Osprey and MJF. I know what you're saying. But I'm talking. Yeah, we we talk about storyline too. We talk about like storyline. In all height perspective, yeah, we ain't talking. I'm talking bell to bell. I know. No, 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 no. I'm talking bell to bell. That's all I'm talking. Yeah, but straight bell but to but bell. Is there the same the same way that he had mentioned that about. But I got I got to tell you, man. I, 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 yeah, storyline is part of it to me. Yeah. Yeah. So I I think it's possible. I know, but I'm just talking bell to bell. That was all I was saying. But yeah, I mean, if we're talking everything included, for sure. For sure. But I was just saying, like, bell to bell, in-ring action, that was better than anything that was on uh, Forbidden Door. That may be AW's best match since Osprey and Takeshita. So, Osprey's on a roll this year, which we knew that. Yeah. Like, he mm-hmm. works. So, and mm-hmm. I like the story of him... Not wanting to hit his move. Like, there's, they, they got some good stuff going with him. And now we are completely in the dark on what All In looks like. I don't think Garcia's going to be back in time to challenge MJF because they, you know, made a comment. He's going to be gone for a while. I don't know if you do a rematch. I don't know if we get Ricochet next week. You know what I mean? Like, so they got some good things happening. They got I got to tell you, I don't, I, don't, I don't like that spot that he does, man. I don't think it's befitting. Which one? The Tiger Driver? Yeah, his, his reluctance to using it because these dudes are killing each other in this ring. Like they they're doing moves on the hardest part of the apron. <laughs> like they're doing moves on the outside. They're doing Canadian destroyers on dudes' heads mm-hmm. on concrete from the inside to the outside. And you can't do a tiger driver. Like I, and, and you're supposed story, to try to win though. a match. I don't. It's a story. I, the story I don't like the story. I don't like the story. It don't it don't fit. 
it don't fit it don't fit the whole an entire match that he does he does moves that are just as you know he look we saw hey, y'all know that poor man that poor boxer um he was a he was a handsome guy tall handsome guy a boxer and like uh his opponent cheap shot him a couple times in the back of the head and now he's like paralyzed for life yeah like so right bad. i don't know what so you're it, it it only takes we know in real life that it only takes a couple of hard shots to a head to really affect somebody's body and these dudes are doing all this kind of stuff and just shrugging it off so i know this one move probably really hurts the most maybe in real life or something i don't know but well remember it, he, he almost took brian out brian almost lost his career because of it. and you did start by saying he that he's a good guy he's a baby face so that makes sense mm-hmm. but i also have to say too you just said that a couple good shots to a head can change a body that's absolutely 100 percent accurate and factual Rhodesia, give me a couple of good shots to the head. It absolutely oh, changes shit. my body. I, I get weak in the knees. I'm editing you know what I'm saying? Like, too. it's just a whole different type of situation. I'm so, sorry. hey, shout out to the freaks happening? out there. What's happening right now? <laughs> that's that's listening to us. And I want to shout out WWE for listening to our podcast a few weeks ago. Of course, we play it from time to time. LA Knight, oh. shout us out with Three the Hard Way. This past Monday, Chad Gable talking about YS6. And what did he say? The freaks. The freaks. Appreciate you guys. Keep listening, baby. Uh, e, you want to touch on Mariah May? You said on the last podcast that you wasn't feeling how the turn happened. Did her promo today help you with that at all? Um, you know what? So here's the thing: when I was when I mentioned that, um, it's not that I didn't like where they had taken things and how things were going. I just thought they could have been a little bit better because when I'm thinking about like for one number one. I don't know if I said it before, but like Tony Storm, timeless Tony Storm is the best recent wrestling character um, around to me. Like I'll put her right up there with like Bray Wyatt as far as like a, a character and talk about like, you know, like Undertaker, a Kane type of character. I, th- I, I, I love what she's doing with that character. I'm really, I really like Mariah Man, what she's doing. Um, I thought the act was really going. So when I said that, I, I wish there was a little bit more story before the eventual feud. I'm thinking about something going back to like Hogan and, and Savage. I'm thinking about Janetti and Michaels. I'm thinking about even Trick and Mello, right? The story and the roller coaster and the journey they took us on before the eventual feud and, and the actual matches, right? I'm talking about like just that, like, you know, they're going to break up. If they're not, they're like, it's a whodunit. It's like a lot of the different intrigue going into like the story. And then you're still shocked about, how the actual turn happens and when it happens, right? I, I thought we were going to get more of that before we actually just got the out of nowhere, like, no turn. Um, that's what I was looking for, right? Now, I'm not saying that the the story that they're telling won't be good and it, it can't be great. I think right now it's a, it's a it's probably going to be a good to great, you no know, wrestling feud. Because, um, you know, we get basic wrestling stuff on NXT and we talk about NXT all the time, right? NXT, mm-hmm. ain't, they, they're not doing you know, um, grade A cinema over there, right? There's it's basic, easy to understand stories. Like they got very simplistic stories. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I just expect a little bit more out of those characters because I, I think so highly of them. I thought this storyline could have been like a mellow trick. Um, maybe even better than mellow trick. I thought those two characters, just from my standpoint, um, were a little bit ahead of where they were. Um, but we, I knew, I thought that Mariah would come out and, you know, make it all make sense from a villain standpoint, right? I thought, you know, there'd be like some, some shreds of truth in her promo, but like there'd be some distortion because she's a villain. So it's kind of like Magneto, right? You know, for, mm-hmm. for the X-Men, like, you know, there's some, a lot of truth to what he's saying, but there's also a lot of this tyranny in, in, in his voice as well. I don't know if I got that. I was actually was a little underwhelmed by her promo. Uh, I didn't expect that. Like, cause again, when I was saying about the, the, the direction of the storyline, I thought it could have been better. So this is, let's say, I thought it was a B. I think it could have been an A plus. Is what I was hoping for. I don't know if that promo is exactly what you needed after that type of a bloody beatdown. Um, I was a little underwhelmed by it. What? Did, how'd you guys think? I probably would agree with that. I love what happened though last Dynamite. So I give that an A. Two rounds of applause on that one. But the follow up. I said that I needed to kind of see what happens next. I'll probably give this like a C as far as my understanding of like why this happened 
and the the engagement to it. So I want to see maybe how next week I'm going to give them one more week to kind of make it um, fully whole for me. So why I know I should be completely booing Mariah May. So I'm I'm kind of with you there as far as a little underwhelming as far as the response. But again, it could also have been because I was just so hype off that MJF and Osprey match. And we know like you could get wrestling fatigue. So things happen where maybe it actually wasn't that bad. Maybe it was actually what it needed to be, but I was just so hype in what I saw in the, the 60 minutes before. It was, um, it didn't match the beat down from last week. Promo was fine. Say if the beat down didn't happen and maybe she just, you know, after she won, she laid her out with the belt and she, you know, put the belt on top of her and she walked out. And then we get this promo, no harm, no foul. But you left her bloody. And just leaving her bloody and just how gruesome it was and how hard she went after her, it just didn't match the promo today. Promo was fine. But yeah, when I was watching, I was kind of like, okay, I didn't think they would go this way. It kind of just, you know, a little off, but whatever. So that was a because disconnect then. We talk yeah. about promos. Yeah. It was a disconnect for me also on Monday with the YS6. That was that was which their part? first misstep. Which which part exactly? Uh the beatdown of Bo. Okay. No, that was incredible. I was I, I cried Rowan, almost. Actually, I think I did cry in that one. Yeah, the Rowan promo sit down video was fantastic, which it would be because it's real life. Right. Mm-hmm. And then all I keep saying is I'm so glad, you know, for Rowan and for Bo for them to be able to use their real life pain. And put it mm-hmm. on camera. I uh, thought that was tremendous, you know, because he he took it hard both times. He took it hard with um, when um, I'm forgetting his name. Um, Which one? Help me out. Gable. No, are we talking uh, about Rowan when um, Bray and when, um, when they, Hobart. Yep. What's his name? Huber. John Huber. Yep, and John passed away when both of them passed. He took it really, really oh, hard. Brody so for him to be able to, Bray. yeah, mm-hmm. articulate that and use it um i thought was great but yeah the beatdown of Bo was way too long with the creed brothers and, and angle and, and then i called him angle and gable um <laughs> and i know it was just to show that like you, you can't keep them down i get that part it just went way too long and then when the y6 came out that took a long time to happen and nothing happened. So it was just the first misstep. I'm not, it is what it is, but I was like, okay, this is the first time where it wasn't what I thought it could have been. I, uh, um, as far as, like I said on the last show that I'm, I think I said on the show, if not, I said it with you, Matt, like, I don't really want to see any more video packages, like in the way that they've been doing it. Um, like, is she going to be called sister Abigail? Do we know? Or are we just calling her just one her of the people? Yet. They haven't okay. her name yet. So we'll just yeah. say Sister Abigail until they like say maybe, she won't, maybe she won't be because I feel like they, they would have said that because that's mm-hmm. an established character in that mythology. Like, right? So maybe she's going to be somebody else. Maybe we we might see Alexa. That's what I'm thinking. Possibly. Yeah. But. Well, let's, okay. So I'll say Nikki. So I did not like the whole... I did not want to see again Nikki dropping off a box to Pat, you know, or dropping it off to Michael Cole um, in that the way that we've seen three times already. So I do like how they introduce like the Pat McAfee show and leaving it there um, and then them still showing it to get us a great video package with Rowan. So heartfelt and amazing there. Um, So I was happy there that we got another video that wasn't presented the way it had been. Uh, But at the end of the show, I felt like it was a little bit too long too. I probably wouldn't have said that unless you, if you hadn't said that it was going long, I just felt again, it was just a little bit off for me and the off to me absolutely probably could have been just Mm -hmm. how long it was. So, but again, I wouldn't say that it was a misstep at all. I would just say that it's just, it didn't execute the way that I maybe wanted it to be, but I already, they already had super duper high standards already. Um, I, I definitely agree. The beat down, um, Went on a little bit too long. Um, I, I guess, you know, they got TV to fill. That's one of those things, right? right? Um, but I, right. it wasn't, I didn't, th- I didn't take it as a misstep. I was like, all right, maybe this, this, this is going on a little bit too long. But for me, I wouldn't take it as a, uh, as a mistake. I'm a little more patient to see where they're going, trying to flesh out this character, these characters in this storyline. Um, because, you know, they're, it, you know, they're introducing these characters, um, and kind of trying to create their own path, right? Because it was supposed to be something different originally when Bray was going to be part of it. So mm-hmm. uh, for me, I have patience in letting them see where it's going to go. 
Um, I have a little more patience. Well, I got patience for Mariah and Tony too, because like I said, I, I love those characters. I, mean, I think Tony is like great, and Mariah's gonna be fabulous. Where I just thought, like, man, I expect a little bit more from them than I do from these guys so far. Because to be honest with you, like, I didn't have high expectations on the group um, prior to them kind of coming out. They've kind of surpassed my expectations, especially Bo Dallas and what he's been doing, um, and the rest of them. Um, I was like, out of respect for Bray and his legacy, I was willing to give these guys a chance. I honestly, I never said it out loud because I some things I don't want to say out loud because I don't want it to come true. I, I didn't think they could pull it off, to be honest with you. And they're and they're figuring it out. Like you know, mm-hmm. Roland's video package was was great. It was real, right? Then, um, so you get a, a peek into his character. So now you can sympathize with him a little bit more when you mm-hmm. see him on the screen. Um, and with the break, I'm mean, sorry, with the Bo Dallas character, I guess they're trying to create that he's deranged, right? He's getting his ass whooped and he's taking it. He's laughing it off. Like, right, he's getting so, so like they're beating this dude down and he's laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing like it's not phasing them. Right. So now they're trying to they're, they're creating like a little bit of danger in this character. Like, all right, this dude is kind of he's quote unquote sick. He's taking some mm-hmm. beat downs mm-hmm. and he's and he taking it with a he's taking it with a chin. And he's smiling about it. Right. So that's what I got from it, because I like like I'm a big story guy. So I'm I like seeing like stuff unfold. And I, I have more patience in letting them tell the story. Because again, like I said, I always talk about it. I'm a big anime guy. That's that's what happens in anime. You can't just get in there and think that what's, what you're watching in that 20 minutes that you're going to get is going to be all action-packed. Sometimes it's just story building stuff, right? And it may not be inter- – it may not be, I would say, not interesting. It may not be exciting. But it's definitely going to set the, 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 the tone for the next episode and for future episodes. So for me, I always give that type of stuff a chance. Um, but I did think it went too long, but I, I thought it was fine other than that. Yeah, it just went too long. That's all. I mean, I liked where they went. We got we got the shot of them all together in the ring, you know, with Bo doing the break kind of pose uh, right in the dead mm-hmm. center of them. All that was fantastic. It, it just went went long. But, man, you talk about storytelling, man. WWE is – is. I, we say it a lot. We say it a lot, and we are super, super high on WWE right now, as is the majority of people who probably watch wrestling. They are on a If they're honest with themselves. I just never thought, I just never thought we would see this, maybe ever, after WWE was just not the best for so long, and AEW came and took a lot of that, brought that love back to professional wrestling. To watch that show on Monday and to see every single segment have a purpose to it. To see every single match have a purpose to it. There was nothing that you sat there and said, why are they doing this? It was not a rematch on the show of the same match we've seen five weeks in a row now. (laughs) And everybody, uh, let me take it back. The majority of people who are showcased right now is over. I don't have it in front of me. That show started off with Rhea Ripley, uh, Dominic, Liv Morgan, Damian, Damian Priest, Gunther, Seth Rollins. Like you, Jay Us, like you just look at everybody who they showcase. And yeah, I'm not watching Raw Live anymore. So I'll watch it when I get home on Mondays. So I get to fast forward through commercials. I'm, I'm typically watching all the segments. So yeah, that's a little bit. Different too because you're able to just fast forward through you know the mm-hmm. two and a half minute commercial breaks, but so, yeah, I legit critical am watching Raw point. now, and these three hours are not an issue. And boy, when you can fast we, forward, when you can fast forward every week at t- yeah two hours in, like yo, this is the I got another hour I got to watch of this. <laughs> it's just it's tremendous, man. So shout out to Triple H, his creative team. If you are on the show, you you are there with a. For a purpose, with a purpose. And I, I think that's tremendous, man. I really do. Hey, man, I got to tell you something, man. I actually got a note. Uh, we on the same page with this one, man. I got a page. Like, this is the best stretches of Raw that I've watched probably since the Attitude Era, just for me personally. Just from, like, bell to bell. I am started the show to the end of the show. Like, it's it was a really enjoyable show. Um, as you said, like characters are over, storylines are good. Um, and I don't fast forward as much. Now, I don't know if I actually fast forward through much of the show. There are some characters and storylines that I'm not into yet, but you know, I'm gonna give them a chance. 
Um, give me one. Give me something that you saw Monday. You was like, I'm still not bought in yet. Oh, uh, you know what's Sonya Deville's team? Mm-hmm. I like Sonya. And when I saw her come, I'm like, man, I missed her. Like her, Alexa, Carmella, like, cause like they have so much personality that they can talk. Like I thought the the like I feel like the shows miss them in the division, man, because they're so charismatic. And I, I'm glad Sonya is, is back. And I'm hoping she can help the other two girls. It's just that right now to see them like twice on the same show, it, it just wasn't clicking for me. So then you know, we had, you know, her match. And like I like Sonya as a character. I think she looks mm-hmm. phenomenal. I think she has some of the best women's gear out there. Um, I told man, her swag is on point. Yeah, no, she, she is swagged. like she came out. She came out with that wardrobe change when she came out for the second <laughs> match. I was like, yeah, now she's smoking this she, right now. She, she's she, man, she's yep. she's she's on fire. And I got another note, man. And I, I, I got a question here too that leads right into her, man. Like Selena, man, she is so good. Like on the mic, she's a great talker. Her little segments, she does a really good job. Cause you know, like a lot of these segments, when you the back backstage segment, it sounds like like they read a cue card right before they come out. But like Selena really owns her verbiage. I don't know if it's her. They give her it's like her. some bullet points, and she come out there, yep. and she says what you need to say. Um, but she comes out there and she really owns her segments in the, the small amount of time they give her. And I just say, God damn it, man! I put up like, yo, get her away. From Ray and that LW, get her away from them. Get her, get Y'all, her gone, man. I think either you or Rhodesia have brought up the LW in a negative light yep. the last six episodes. I'm waiting for y'all just to not bring them up for one episode. Six and I months. No disband. <laughs> I promise you. Well, the, they, you know somehow, I'm gonna be perfectly way, honest they, with they y'all here. Be... I I'm telling you right now. LWO is making me mad at every single Mexican group. <laughs> Like, and that's like so whoa. messed up. Oh, because whoa, wait, it's a like, minute, wait a minute. And so now. you have the like, like, Gano no, and the, right, the, 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 the sources. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, wait. like, because it's like, because they are so, yeah, these other groups are so damn good. But my disdain for LWO is just like, man, like, oh. stop. You're making me not like the Los Thorias. I don't even, can't even pronounce their name. Um, on, in, on any, on any company, I'm like, man, it just reminds me of LWO and it's pissing me off so bad. And that's that's out of respect. Man, this though. is why sometimes you can't you can't take certain people some places. Man, you can't take Rodiz on the internet with us. She but no, but that's but that's the truth. Aiden, oh lord, it's the truth. Um, I mean, and I, gotta, I don't I, think nobody I, I takes offense to that. No, I mean, we, I, mean, we don't move on that. Uh, I got I got a question from you. I got a question for y'all. What's the worst faction, the LWO or the Underwhelming Kingdom? What's the what's what's the worst faction? Oh, it's the Kingdom. The kingdom of, over an AW, right? You talking about? Yeah, the Underwoman Kingdom. And to me, that's not even close. Mm. I still like. Yeah, because I don't even know who they are. I, still I don't like even know Zelina. the name of them. Yeah, like I, I, I don't, I don't really care about anybody who was in that that faction right now. They're I just they're you. underwhelming. Like they're not even good. Like you, okay. Say if the thing about LWO is they're not being utilized properly as a unit. There's still value in Ray. There's still value in Zelina. There's value absolutely in. You know what I'm saying? But you look at the kingdom. Yes, there's value in them, but they're not going to be at the same level on the card if they everybody became singles competitors as if you were to break them up in WWE. So that's why I, I go with with them. You know, I thought about the, uh, I, 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 did, I I had a note. I kind of hoped that uh, Wardlow had came and interfered and helped uh, MJF uh, in his match with uh, Will. I like to see them back those, together. I like to see them two back together. It will make sense, right? Because I feel like that was the height of Warlow's popularity in AEW, and I feel like MJF, man, he's all right. So he, he's a small dude, like right. He's a small dude. You know, he, he he's ripped. He's cocky. You mean he can go short? Ring. You mean short, not small? Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's height, not as far yeah, as like yeah, size, right, right. but okay, but yeah, if, yeah, even yeah. in the, the when you look at the, well in that roster, he's a. He's a small wrestler, right? He's, you know, he's probably more of a cruiserweight, right? But he, he has a big old gigantic mouth, right? Like, he talks about everybody. You would think this dude would have, like, a, a heavy. Like, right? He would have somebody that's there to, to get people off of him, right? Because he's, he's, he's not a, that big of a dude to have that big of a mouth and to be standing on his own like that. So it would make sense that he would have flunkies, right? And so this time, you know, MJF and Warlow too. It could be more of a partnership, like, yo, you know, I'm an a-hole. I don't like you. You don't like me. But 
it's a money arrangement and you know, you're going to get yours and I'm going to get mine and that we going to figure it like, whatever. Right. They can kind of come mm-hmm. up with stories of why they got the back together. I feel like, like that will make sense and give Warlow something to do. But the rest of the kingdom, I got to be honest with you. You know how much I don't like the Underwoman Kingdom. I take the Underwoman Kingdom get out um, of here. over the LWO. Get I out would. of here. I give, give, <laughs> so, me, give me, give me Roddy. Give me Roddy and 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 and, and Tarvin. You was a lie right and, now. Uh, you was a lie right and now. Bennett, give him no. <laughs> no I'm not. Way. Give him. Give him some. No freaking. Okay. Way. Give him some. Okay. How about this? How about how about they put the belt back on no, Roddy no. at all in? You still going with the the kingdom? I'll pull this car over. I'll 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 turn this thing around right now, man. Don't talk to me like that. <laughs> but let me I'll ask you a question. Turn this car though. around so quick. That's when funny. it comes to Warlow. He was the best for him, at least from for a long stretch of time, was when he was with MJF for sure. But to my memory, did they ever truly finally settle? And did Warlow really get his get back against MJF? Yes, yeah, so because we have to work through that. Thirty-two power bombs and beat him in like two minutes. Okay, that was a double or nothing okay. in Vegas. Okay. So then, so then he did. When, okay, uh, MJF was gone after that. Yeah. Yep. So then, actually, they yep. can get back together. So there you go. He got his got back. He gets get back. So yeah, I, I can see that because that was the last time to me I felt like Warlow was um, important enough. Like he had a, a quick stretch in time, but he would he would get super hot and then super cold. So I can't even count that. Um, but he was really important, I think, to me when he was with MJF. And you know, it's like not again armchair booking. Well, I got my my arm armchair right here. So, um, like. Well, he didn't beat him clean. So there's still a cop out reason, right? Because you know he didn't know what to with the ring. I wonder did they get that ring back. But anyway, <laughs> like that would have gave you know again Will another out, right? Like somebody came and interfered, like in the match, and then it kind of gives like Will somebody got to go through to get the MJF again, right? Well, now we we probably know we're gonna get some kind of rematch probably at at the London show, but um, I like the possibility of that being that. Speaking of re- returns or uh, these, you were talking about Warlow reuniting with MJF. We had a reunited source on, on Raw with Rhea and, and Dom. Rhea's back. Clear cut mm-hmm. baby face. Mm-hmm. Ain't, no, ain't no question about it. Crowd mm-hmm. treat her as such. She looked incredible. She had them things out. Um, she's, I mean, she's, she was missed. She was absolutely missed just from a... She was missed from a Damian Priest perspective. Yeah, I, Damian I was just may about have to had his best my night. Two minute rant on him. Exactly. Damian may have had his best night, but I also think it's coinciding with Damian. Just isn't the best heel. I think we're seeing where Damian's long game can be. And I think he's a good face because his interactions. Making fun of Dom backstage were great. Him conversating with Rhea was great. His promo was very strong before and after Gunther. And I like mm-hmm. now that the promo was fantastic because um, Gunther really leaned into what we kind of feel about Priest's title reign. Oh, eh, he ain't been the best. He actually said, you yeah. ain't doing nothing and you're poor. <laughs> <laughs> you're mm-hmm. homeless. He went super hard and on he him. Said, but I he, love and that. He said your parents were dead. They used that in the promo. And then I love that it is. Say what? <laughs> he called his parents for being deadbeats. <laughs> he did. He absolutely did. <laughs> so now we have a clear cut heel in Gunther. Because if you don't do that, Gunther is probably getting cheered more than Damien at SummerSlam. And now we got the clear cut baby face. We are trending very close to what I was saying surrounding what is probably going to happen, in my opinion, with Liv and Rhea. So it's official for SummerSlam. They made that official. And we get Liv with Dom and Finn, however that looks. And you're going to have Rhea with Priest and whoever else that looks like. So that that's starting to, to set up pretty nice. But what did you guys think of uh, Rhea's night? And what did you think of Damian Priest and Gunther's night? Your uh, the, the internet went out, but you said, "How would I feel about Rhea's return, hey, her night, and Damian's night?" Okay, the internet so, finally got her. <laughs> so they they got her, man. They got her. Um, the internet was whooping you know, her as a all show. 
<laughs> Yo, so I actually had none on that too, man. I actually agree with you on Damien. You know, I, I've been down on Damien um, for it since his entire uh, reign. I feel like he's just been a boring character because he's kind of been in the middle, right? He hasn't, he hasn't been fully healed, hasn't been fully faced. But man, he brought it on Monday, man. That you're right. That was his best character stuff that he's done was on Raw. Um, he he did a great job in every segment. Um, this is the Damien that we need. He's he's yep. definitely full fledged baby. Um, we know that for sure. Um, and I really enjoy the Gunther promo. I think this is actually Gunther's best character work on the mic. Um, I he he, he in his promo he really got in to Damien, and I think he did it in a very heelish way that's just unrelatable to most people. Like right. He disrespected his upbringing. He disrespected his his, his family and parents. Yep. Like we would we would have to square up right from there, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and then he made himself like an elitist. Like, right? Like, man, look, I look, I, I was bred to be great. Like, you know, like he, he I feel like he really submitted himself as a heel. Damien did a great job submitting himself as a baby face. Um, I think that was a great character rebound uh for him. Shoot, I say it's too too. Too uh too late for him now though, because you know you about to drop that that title buddy at the uh, Summer Slams. You know, what I'm maybe saying? not. Be doing man. this character work before uh, that. Man, maybe not. I, I was thinking that maybe not. I'm like when he was Damien had such a strong promo last night on Raw that I'm like it is a possibility that he's going to be retaining to the point where I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm about to go on the pod and start saying I'm going to be rooting for Damien to keep the title. <laughs> that was such a great, great promo. Like Damien had one with, was it Seth last week? And then now with Gunther this week, like you mentioned that Damien on the mic is better as a face. I think as a heel, he's good as just muscle. Cause he's again, he's tall, he's big um, and he's powerful. But I, as far as having levity to a character itself, he probably is going to be better as a face, but his promo in that ring going against Gunther, like he won in, in, in between those exchanges. And, and I thought that Gunther was always killing it on the mic. To your point E about, you think this is some of Gunther's best work because yeah, he has to bring another level to it. Um, but just, I don't want to belabor what y'all said already, but I just marked it as Gunther is entitled. And Damien has been the underdog. He's been yeah, struggling he and is. fighting and clawing his whole life. So for me, I I I fell in love with that. The underdog. Everybody wants the underdog to win. So for me, I'm gonna go on here and say I don't F Gunther. I want Damien to retain. Man, you can't be seven foot and be an underdog or anything, in my opinion, man. Like, but I, I feel <laughs> what you're saying though. But no, man. Um he 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 gotta be he he dropping that bad boy. <laughs> I don't know, man. You know, because what what I thought, what I loved about Priest's rebuttal after Gunther got in his ass, I Mm -hmm. loved him basically saying, like, you're going to lose. And what we've never seen from you basically is how you're going to react to losing. What what are you going to do? Are you going to be able to pick yourself back up? Are you going to cower somewhere? And I loved that angle of it because he's right. Every time, I mean, hell, Gunther... Arguably one of the best IC. Well, no, not arguably. He's arguably to some people the best intercontinental champion of all time. I don't know if I can go that far. I have to really, really think back in my fandom to think about that. But absolutely, of the modern era of this era, he's the best intercontinental champion of all time. But he goes right from that. Okay, he's oh man, he lost at WrestleMania to winning the King of the Ring. All right, that, that's not a absolutely that's not a drop. He is. Right. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens at SummerSlam because if he loses. Don't forget that next pay-per-view was in his home country at the end of August. So mm. if he loses, mm. is, does that turn into a rematch with Damian Priest? And hey, you know, if you're great, do it in your most hostile environment. I'm just interested to see, because I think they're going somewhere with that. And honestly... This is going to sound crazy because we kind of been shitting on Priest's title reign up to this point. But after these last two weeks, he tells Seth, hey, man, after I get done with with Gunther, I'm changing my mind. I'll give you another shot. You just kind of say when and where. After what he said with Gunther, 
is it really time for Priest to drop the title? In his story, I told you, you ask me, nope, I, I'm going to hashtag Damien to win at SummerSlam. That might be too long of a hashtag, but that is what I'm about to rock with. I'm sold. I'm sold on face, Damien. I love that y'all have the ability to just, just change your tune at the snap of a finger, man. One little promo, y'all go the other mm-hmm. way so quick. Because they connect. Two weeks. It, connect. Two weeks. I, I... it connected. <laughs> It hit me here. Hey, I was I'm never like, homeless in a in a car, but but I know some struggle. I know some struggling time, so I relate more to Damien. Hey. And you I, should relate too. Cody is your guy. We know hard times from Dusty Rhodes. E. Damien was talking about them hard times. Mm-hmm. You should be. You should be. You should be rooting for Damien also. To get I'll out of Cleveland been, with that. I, I, world I've also been sitting here um, in, 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 during his title reign since uh, April, and it's been trash. So I appreciate that we get Hasn't two weeks of good content. But at the end of the day, man, like, you know, it's much like what they had to do with uh, Swerve to kind of eliminate a factor so he won't seem like a lame duck champion. He's not like a lame duck champion. It just seemed like there's too many other guys that are there. A la Drew, a la Punk, Seth. Like, he, he, he needed to do more work to rise above those guys and two weeks just don't put them there for me um and then we got the, the we got the ultimate storyline or whatever's happening with the, with the implosion of the judgment day we know that's cap we know that's coming so when we talk about storylines like i mentioned earlier with uh with uh mariah and tony like we know that something's brewing in the judgment day we don't know what it is we don't know when it's going to happen but we know something's going to happen and it might ha- and it might happen at the expense of, of him losing the title and so what better way for Gunther actually to be champion in his hometown defending against, you know, somebody. So now, you know, Damien, whoever got to go into Gunther's home. Uh, I don't know if it's his, his country or whatever, but yeah. he got to go there and he got to rally against the, the, the crowd. He got to overcome the odds to try to get the championship back. That's a that's a, a bigger and better story than him retaining and then Guther going in there being cheered by the crowd against a, a baby face that's being reestablished as a baby face. Like that's know, that makes man. more sense to me hmm. than having Damian Priest go in there and being getting booed in you know, during the title defense. Well, you, well, you talking about in uh Bachelor of Berlin, right? Priest yeah, yeah. getting booed. Yeah, well, he's yeah. I mean anybody he anybody Guther works, Guther's the baby face. But now that they've clearly defined Guther being the heel. Even though he's been a hill, mm-hmm. but he's been getting a lot of cheers just because we but, all love him but, his work. But I think that again, he's beginning cheers out of respect because of his work now, right? I felt mm-hmm. like that was a great uh, promo. So we you know, sometimes like you know, like uh, you know, like when you got a heel and you want to keep him heel, like Swerve, for instance, like right? I don't know if Swerve did well, he, if he wanted to stay heel. I don't know if he started cutting the promos to keep himself heel. I think he kept with the dancing. He kept up. He kept doing a lot, leaning into a lot of the things. That the crowd was respecting and liked about him, right? Whereas when Guthrie with that promo, he was trying to take away the stuff that you would cheer him about. Like, right? okay, you respect his inward ring work, but he also thinks he's better than half the people in the crowd. Like, right? Right. Obviously, right? Because more people can relate to Damian Priest and that story than they can re- relate to being, you know, spoon fed for all your life, right? And thinking you're better than somebody. So he's trying to take that element, that like ability away from him, right? Now he goes to his home country, you know, he's gonna get the hometown treatment. So but he may even try to turn them against him. But I feel like it's a it's a better dynamic for him to go in there as champion than versus this guy who's trying mm. to fend off this dude. And you know what I'm saying? He's coming for your t- like like Guthrie's coming home it. and he's challenging for the title too. Like it's gonna be hard to keep this them them fans from booing like your your prized baby face. I get it. I get it. And we can go either way. Because and I'll, I'll tell you the other reason why I'm starting to lean toward priest winning. Damn, the T's gone. Be- because I think you get a better reaction from that Germany crowd when he wins the title opposed to coming in as the champion. And if he's going to lean heavily into being a heel over these next uh, month and a half in the Mm -hmm. United States, when he goes to Germany and they flip that switch, it's going to make for a bigger moment. But the other reason why I'm starting to think that Priest may win is because Rhea's back and she's not winning at SummerSlam. So do you really have both Rhea and Damian lose? I don't think you do that when they're together, when they're going to be still together, you know, through this Judgment Day feud and after the Judgment Day piece. I don't know give if you some, do that. Give I, him something I, I, think, I think you keep, I think you keep Priest with the title. 
It gives something to be mad about, though. It does, um, because Dom Dom is one hundred percent going to live. And oh yeah, it's going to it's yes, going it's going to show <laughs> at SummerSlam, yeah. mm-hmm. and I'm going to love it. I think mm-hmm. it's going to be great. Um, because the same thing with Liv, like her time with the title is nowhere near over, and this story is not done with yet with Dom and Liv and Rhea. So I just don't know if you have both of your top dogs in Judgment Day lose at your second biggest show of the year. Because if they're going to be connected, really like right, point. take everything from them. Like if they're going to be together, like one of them can't be good and one of them and one of them down bad, right? One of them can't be up, one down. Like no, we taking we both y'all out well, the group. Maria we did represent though for him. Who? Damien? Rhea has said that um, that he's been holding it down. Yeah, and then she gave him props for you know being a good champion. So I can still see. Whoever Cap, being Cap champion, was, like they have like, such a great relationship. <laughs> they they have a really great relationship. And I was actually hoping that they were going to lean into more of a story between the two of them because they have some really good chemistry together. Um, but it seems like they they will play alpha and beta. They, they'll play the role. So I think that, yes, we can unite if both of us don't have a title. So now we're both chasing. But I don't think that would be the purpose th- that story will go well with now the judgment day imploding because if they're good people i just don't see where that part would make sense i can see one of the other being mm-hmm. a champion because one of them have to have to lead because both of them they they do really well together following the direction of one of the other so i i can see damien retaining because i already said i was going to do hashtag damien retains at SummerSlam, um and then Rhea dropping it one thing about Rhea, i have to get mad at her about before we leave tonight. I was out here rocking hard for Rhea, as y'all know. You know, she's the wife at home, dirty dime out here doing dirty things, putting his pee-pee in things he shouldn't be putting pee-pees in. And she got mad when he said that he she belongs to Don, to Dirty Dime. You know, she got mad. And I got mad too. I'm a feminist. Don't say that I belong to anybody. But then what did she do at the end of the show? She said, because because you belong to me. And now I'm like, oh my God, now it's a double standard. I'm sitting here rooting for this woman here and she just completely made me become a hypocrite. So no, just like you don't belong to anybody, Rhea Ripley, Dominic don't belong to anybody else either. No, I, what I thought you were going to apologize for was for me being right two episodes ago when I told you Liv has treated Dom better than Rhea ever has. I thought that's what you were going to say. You know what, Matt, now I see your point. You're absolutely right. And you didn't, you didn't, but I, I called it out. I said, I even said at the end of that, but one show, I said, um, now we fine. can argue. I got a question for y'all. Um, which, right now, which, what's your favorite? Liv does. I, I've said that before. Oh, you went out again <laughs> and then you came back. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that audio sounds right there because I have no idea where that was at. So it's, it's, it, the, the, the end recordings will be fun. It's gonna be great. It should be cleaned up though. I was saying, um, I have a question for you guys. What's your favorite storyline right now between Drew, Seth, and Punk and Rhea, Dom, and Liv? And who knows mm-hmm. if Rodiz is there, so. Yeah, I'll just go. Um, for me, I like the Dom, Liv, and Rhea story a little when bit I more. Back in, um, I'll be on the and I think part of it, we know we just lost it forever. Um, I think part of it. <laughs> he said forever. <laughs> I think part of it um, is because the injury that both from Drew and Punk kind of um, kind of stretched out or made the few a little weird. Yeah, for a little time where where you know to be honest with you, it seemed like the the injury for Rhea kind of worked for the storyline, right? It, it kind helped. of yeah because it it got her off the screen, so you can tell this story about, you know, Liv chasing Diamond and Dom finally giving in and how the rest of Judgment Day are reacting to, you know, like uh, this infidelity almost from yep. uh, from Dom, right? So it, it told a story with her being away to where if she was there, they probably wouldn't have told this story in the same way. So it kind of helped, whereas I think the injury bug kind of hurt the CM Punk Drew story. Because, um, like I said, it's just kind of weird. They, they're bringing Punk out there. He's not clear to wrestle, and he's challenging you know drew to fights that he can't be in you know yeah but they're trying to you know stretch up some tv and get through the few so um definitely but you know and live 
E, to that point, I said that Monday. I said, because it, 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 it was also a testament to the storytelling WWE's doing right now. I said, if you wouldn't know any better, you would have thought Rhea really wasn't hurt and this was planned. That's how good this story's been. During the time she's been out, she's been gone for three months. And you could even say that a little bit with Punk. Punk's um, injury was just longer. right? He got injured at the Rumble. And here it is in August. He still hasn't worked a match yet. So that's the difference of watching somebody who's only been injured for three months and they're going to be cleared to work summer slamming and somebody who was damn near eight months. Um, but even that storyline, we talked about it. That storyline with a couple more weeks of great promos and stuff talking about punk, you know, a drew and Seth, however, Seth is going to be involved in this. That could also mean event, you know? So like, if you, if you take out, if you take out the possibility and I know it's Cody. Cody's the top guy. But if you take out the possibility of Roman Reigns coming back during that match or at the end of that match, you could main event and get away with it and nobody would bat an eye. I think you could you could main event with Liv and Rhea. I think you can main event with Drew and Punk for sure. You can main event with Solo and Cody, of course. Um, so they got some options. But, but that, once again, is just a testament to their storytelling. Rudy, did you hear my question? Rudy, you? Nope. And I'm, I think I'm back live, but maybe not. What was your question? The question was, what is your personal uh, favorite storyline right now? Is it Drew, Punk, and Seth, or is it Rhea, Dom, and Liv? I'm probably going to have to go with Drew, Punk, and Seth, um, just because, again, they are petty as hell talking about Drew and CM Punk. So, and they've been doing things that completely cross that line, at least with, with Liv and Don, they're all grown ups. But like when you take my man's bracelet with the dog and his wife name on there, that's going the next step. You taking his championship away from him and then you now messing up money in the bank. All me like all that kind of stuff right there. Like that's a blood feud. I think is what y'all call it. One of, one of them should kill the other person. By when yep. it's all said and done, you introduce Seth. Now Seth is gonna probably not ca- have the killing happen. But at the end of the day, no one better leave that match. If it's a triple threat match, then no one needs to leave that match like being able to walk away. They all need to hurt each other really bad. So for me, I am in on that one because Punk has taken everything from Drew, everything. So uh, that's mine. What were y'all two? I don't want y'all to have to tell the whole story, but what what were y'all two? I haven't given mine yet. Oh, okay. I was waiting here. I was waiting it? here with both of you guys said. E, did you? Well, would you have one yep. already? Who'd you say? I, I gotta say something real quick, Matt. Um, Samantha Irving is my favorite announcer in the history of wrestling. And Amen. <laughs> I was God say bless. That. But, but please continue. <laughs> yeah, no, I was why, asking why you. you were over her photo. <laughs> I was asking yeah, you. Who did you pick? Yeah, <laughs> asked you what your, what your answer was. He's. <laughs> He has not looked up in the last 46 seconds from his phone. Jeez Louise. Huh? I get it, though. I understand. He said, huh? Yeah. He I said, asked, huh? Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dom, uh, Liv, and uh, Rhea. Got it. And that's mine, too. Yeah, that's mine, too. Okay. Um, I mean, they're, they're, neither one's a wrong answer. And it's week, it's week to week, right? Like, yeah. if something happens next week with Punk and Drew, I'm like, oh, okay, it's that one again. So it's it's kind of just, it's, it's like right there. But yeah, mine would be, if I had to pick, it's Rhea, Dom, and, and Liv. They've put a lot of time into the Liv and Judgment Day story. And it's paying off. And she's doing fantastic. And she, and she is, she is, she is getting better and better every single week with her sexual innuendos. Talking about this past week, you know, everybody knows I'm a screamer or something to that effect. I was like, go mm-hmm. ahead, Liv. Good for you. And then, and then just, it's, Back to WWE, not being, not leaning so much into TV PG. Rhea's music hits. She's on top of Dom, and, you know, she mouths the word shit, and then the announcers make comments on it. Oh, well, mm-hmm. you don't have to be a, a crazy mouth reader to know what Liv just said. Like, they're leaning into it, and it's just like, mm-hmm. everything isn't about mm-hmm. cuss words and sex and, and blood, but, man, when it makes sense, give it to us, and it's, and it's great. Hey, so, hey Matt, I got to ask you a quick question. Yes. Away from wrestling for a second. Speaking of mouth reading, 
Jalen Brown said that uh, Bronny ain't a pro. <laughs> you agree? One hundred percent, I agree. Mm-hmm. And I don't knock anything they're doing. LeBron is my personal goat. So we've seen people been putting their family members on for a lot less yep. for a lot longer. Yep. I, I don't. I'm not hating on any of that. Mm-hmm. But Bronny's not that good. He's not that good right now, and he doesn't have to be. It, it's just everything that came with it. Because he's still a second round pick, but it was the millions of dollars contract. It was, um, it's just a lot that came with it, you know. But no, I, I agree with JB for sure. He's he's not. But the season also he's hasn't showing started it right now. Yet. Yeah, and it's only. But I know it's the summer league it's only, only, but it's, it's only summer league. Mm-hmm. It's only summer league, but I think he's shooting twenty nine percent from the field, and he hasn't hit a three yet. I think he's going to be man, just fine. I think I think he's going to be just fine. I think the summer league is created for rookies and sophomores um, to go down there and help for the Pistons. We had people on there, three, four, five year veterans on there going to summer league, but it damn, still didn't matter. It still didn't matter, league. right? It still didn't matter either. But um, this that is what summer league is team. for. Whole, just the, like the just like NXT, the coach, the just like NXT, um, and we are giving them kind of that that liberty of taking chances figuring out who you are to get in the rhythm i think Bronny's going to be just fine he has a huge amount of pressure on him that like what we probably hear sometimes like from olympic athletes just like you can't even fathom the amount of pressure that they have hell simone Biles couldn't even she had to get out of the olympics last go around um because mentally she just couldn't handle it because it was just so hard that she would freeze yeah you can't freeze on a balance beam like you can't do that so for me, I think he's going to be just fine. Now, we're going to argue he should have got pulled in the first round, the second round. No, I'm not going to go for that because I don't know anything. I'm not educated enough in what was coming up out of that draft where he should have been drafted out of what round. But I think he's going to be just fine. And with him having his father as probably a mentor, he's going to have somebody who's going to keep him straight and on a narrow path. I think give him two years and he's going to be a solid-ass player. We gonna see, man. Like, but you know, he's a you know, second round pick, and they got him playing, you know, big minutes on that team. Um, yeah. Look, I'm all for it, though. As you said, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm all for it, yeah, man. Look, yeah, because you all, yeah, because you all for the BS. That's why you not, you don't think I'm, this I'm man will come it. out here and, and average twelve points? No, right. of course not. I mean, like and, and, and the expectation shouldn't be that. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with this. man. look, we all, as parents, want to put our, our, our children in positions so they can be successful, right? And if you can put yourself in a, mm-hmm. in a position you can help family members or friends, we all do it. It happens yep. in every walk of life. Like, I get so irritated with these people. And, like, you know, they, they, they some of these people online, they turn into, like, Gunther, right? They turn into these elitist snobs to where <laughs> they feel <laughs> like, like life uh, like and things that they would do are are, are are over what other people would do. Like just because this is a millionaire and he can put his son on his team and get him a million dollar contract, that's that's something wrong. As you said, look, if I if I'm a, a manager for McDonald's, like right, you mean tell me I ain't gonna hire uh, uh cousin Jimmy to be the fry cook or something like that and pay him a nice little wage if I can't do it? Yeah, you you gonna do it? You gonna help your friends and family if you are in the position to be able to do so? That's, that's human nature. Everyone does it. It's been going on since the dawn of time. So why is it different for Brian to Bronny? Now, do Bronny have the skill to be in the NBA right now? I mean, look right now, it looks like no. But a lot of, to be honest with you, like summer league, a lot of uh, these young guys look like trash in summer league. Like I remember, yeah. uh, you know, Ivy for the Pistons, mm-hmm. man, he was like shooting like seven for twenty eight or something in some of them games. You know what I'm saying? It's like he was a, a fifth pick. So. I mean, he's 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 in he's he's in good company. We'll see how his career pans out, and even in, even if his contract doesn't last longer than his con his uh his rookie deal, so what? Like right? So what? Got that right? Got to play with my dad. Mm-hmm. I got to play with my son in a high profile mm-hmm. place. He is set up for life. Mm-hmm. I would take that. I would take. I would take. I would take his situation. Now, hey, I hope that he's getting. He's he has. The, the proper support staff around him, right? Because, yeah, he has he makes a lot of money. He lives a lifestyle that a lot of us would, would, would dream. He's making money, millions of dollars, right? But the online scrutiny and people are just mean, like, right? Mm-hmm. So I hope, and, like, you know, the criticism from 
like the fans and commentators and TV are going to be there. So I hope he has the right support staff to help him navigate through that part of the job. Um, but yeah, he do, he gonna be all right, man. It, it, and it is what it is, man. Look, if I he wasn't so. on that, if he wasn't on that bench, you know, averaging a thousand claps, it'd be somebody else doing the same damn thing. As yeah. long as that is the expectation for him in year one, is to clap more than Giannis's brother, he'll be in a good space. Well, first off, anything more than and that, we talk, we talk about for failure. We 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 talk about that. The NASA's asking for a trade. I know it's been a couple of weeks now, and I didn't bring it up on the podcast because again, I don't follow the Bucks like that. But when I when I heard about the NASA's asking for a trade, sir, you are only in the league because of a certain particular reason. But let me stop before I before I lose any other fans for tonight. But <laughs> the NASA's yeah, come you, on, you definitely came out and yeah, you said that all the Mexicans. <laughs> I did not no, say that. Don't do that. Gotta, don't do that. Gotta, don't do that. I gotta, cut, I gotta do cut that too. I gotta no, cut that one too. No, you gotta keep that in. You gotta keep that in because I want everybody. No, keep, keep that in because no, keep that keep that in. No, keep that in because again, that was not meant to be offensive. Only to the LWL. We're kidding, Rodiz. Everybody knows what it is. They they are not believing that you are offensive. You actually have to say something okay. controversial to be offensive, and you make sure you stay completely far away from saying anything. I'm so PC with that on this, um, on this but show. But <laughs> he talked about um, having a career pan out. I want to bring it to NXT real quick. Both Roxanne and Kalani mentioned both names of Julia and Stephanie. My question to y'all is: When do we see them? Do we see them around the same time? Kind of your thoughts on when Julia and Stephanie is going to like be on NXT. Um, I think I grasped what you said. Um, I'm actually, I thought that was really cool, man. I thought just with that side, NXT, this is a really good show, man. Full of surprises, great wrestling matches. Um, very simple and easy to understand show to get into a nice, easy two hours. I wish some of them promos would be a little bit better, man. Like they, like talking about read off a cue card. Like so much of their talent sound like they read off a cue card, um, and I, I think that's, I think it's dreadful. Um, I wish they can do something about that because it sounds like they have the same voice too. Ugh. But um, I love what they're doing on um, with the talent. I love like that little drop that you know that she said that right. Like like people may may or may not know who these people are, but maybe they do. Right, because I, how does their audience know who the hell Joe Hendry, the Rascals, and all these other guys are? Like, right, that has to be a really hardcore audience, right? And you talk about the bump that they've been getting in, in in ratings. Maybe that's some of that TNA, you know, following coming over to to watch NXT. Um, so, kudos to them, man, for really making an engaging television show. I'm, hey, they their women's division is top of the line, best in the world, man. I mean, I'm talking about WWE in general, not just NXT, but NXT as well, because they got a lot of recruits down there, damn it, and they're just killing it. Man, when Julia and, and um, Stephanie get there, woo, NXT is going to be something to watch on, on CW, man, for sure. I think, um, what's the, what is their next big show? I can't remember. I was trying to pull it up, and I couldn't find it. Week. Yeah, I know the Bash, I think, starts in two weeks. It's a two-week event. Maybe... One shows up then. Uh, I do think they're going to be close. I don't think they're going to debut in the same episode. But I, I love that Roxanne brought it up. Because what's so cool now about WWE's product, and I'm including NXT in this, is they are acknowledging what is being talked about. WWE used to never talk about somebody before they debuted on their show. It was like either you are WWE or you don't exist in our world. And for Roxanne to right. be like, look, I won yep. against Lola Vice. She's the one that gets the stand ovation. And then I go online and people talking about Julia and, and Stephanie. Like, you bring them on. I thought that was tremendous. I, but even with, like, WWE, where uh, on Monday, Dom did something or said something wrong. And then they cut to Sheamus in the ring. And Sheamus was like, welcome to the doghouse, Dom. Like, he's watching what's happening. <laughs> yep. Like, mm -hmm. they never used to do that either. It's the, that's that's the kind of stuff that when you've been watching this for so long and you didn't have it, it you recognize how much it adds to the show when you do have it. But I, I think they're coming sooner rather than later. There was actually – there was a report out there. There was a report of when Julia's coming. I just can't remember what the date is, but we know that Stephanie is – She's ready to go. Definitely 
definitely sooner rather than later. She's worked the house show. So I think right. we'll see them relatively soon. Oh. She's ready to go. Hey, we, we, we got we to gotta, uh, sign off pretty soon, but I want to leave you guys with this last question. Are you guys ready to admit that old Dirty Music Band for the past 15 years it has been bad for wrestling? I couldn't hear the first part. Uh, um, oh, hmm. Mm. Are, mm. are we ready to admit that Vince for the last Rod- Rhodesia 15 was so years, upset by the by the question that she had to leave? Um, way for me to go out. Just tell the freaks. Bye for me. He has done more good than bad in the last fifteen years. Oh, but shit. his bad was really bad, and of course that is completely um, outside of the real life stuff. But he has done more good than bad. Because in the last 15 years, you're talking the, the advent of the network, right? Oh, but his bad was really bad. You're talking course, Brock Lesnar. Oh, you're talking The Shield. I mean, there's a lot that he did that is going to stand the test of time. Bad, but the, the bad was bad. Years, <laughs> Maybe we'll really revisit really in detail. But I'm more so talking about you're the talking on-screen Lesner, business. Because WWE... I mean, there's a was wrestling for a really long time, right? And he made it, his show was so bad that it, he, he helped create competition for his brand in AEW, right? So in a lot of ways, I guess in some ways he was good and bad. But we, we can dive and deep dive and structure that question another time. And get really or maybe, it. you know, we could, you know, we could do two E on Sunday. Actually, maybe the better question, which would be a fun topic. If trip, if triple H was running WWE five years ago, would there be an AEW? Don't give your answer. Now we'll leave that as a cliffhanger for Sunday. show. I think that would be a great conversation because there's a lot to think about. There's a lot to really internalize on that question in the, the scope of the wrestling business and all that. I think that, that that's a good one. Maybe we'll leave with that unless it depends on what happens on SmackDown, but that's a good one. Mm-hmm. We could definitely have a long, good conversation. If you guys are listening, let us know your thoughts on it. We'll read and talk about your guys' thoughts too. If, if this was hell, AEW just celebrated their 250th episode of dynamite. You remind the time we we're talking five years ago, if triple H was running WWE. Would there be an AEW right now in the United States? Give us your thoughts on that. And give us your thoughts and thumbs up and likes and all that kind of stuff. You guys know how we need you guys. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. We are out of here. It is just me and Ishan left. Rhodesia sent us a text message that said, make sure to let the freaks know I said bye. Since she's watching right now the live stream and she has to figure out her signal. Yeah, you do have to figure your signal out. She looked like she was in like 480i in a snowstorm <laughs> and a rainstorm all damn day. So hopefully the audio comes out pretty good. I'm sure it will. Yeah. But uh, that's about it. We out of here. We'll see you guys on Sunday. Give you guys more of this awesome three to hard way conversation about what we all love. And that's professional wrestling. See you guys then. Peace. <laughs>